Let me show you what to look out for when focus stacking in Photoshop as we edit this image. So you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. As always, we will be starting with the raw adjustments. So if you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters of the video to quickly navigate to this point. Now here we are in the camera raw editor down below in the film strip. You can see the four images we will be using for this shot. And let's start with this as the base image. I'm going to collapse the film strip down below so we can see a little bit better here. Right away, I want to change the profile to Adobe Landscape because I want this shot to be colorful and the landscape profile will just help with the base saturation boosting the colors slightly. Then let's work on the exposure and the lights panel. First off, I'd like the base image to be a little bit brighter, so I'm going to bring up the exposure. All right, of course, this will have a negative effect on the sky as we now lose a bit of detail in those bright areas. I'm going to pull down the highlights quite a bit so we can get back all this nice detail, especially in those clouds like this. Wonderful. Then I'm very gently pushing the shadows to get out some more details from the darkest parts. At the same time, I'm going to gently drop the blacks just to add a bit of contrast. And that's it for the light adjustments. That's looking pretty good so far. Let's continue in the color tab. I'd like this shot to be a little bit warmer. So I'm going to very carefully bring up the temperature. Not too much. I just want to have a hint of golden light right here at the top. Also, I'm going to bring up the vibrance a little bit, boosting the colors further, but that's about it for the color panel. Then let's go ahead, open up the effects tab. I do want the shot to look sharp and clear. Therefore, I'm going to bring up the texture a bit, making the final details of this image look sharper. I'm also going to bring up the clarity, which will boost the midtones contrast. And I think that's pretty much it for the basic adjustments. So let's compare to before real quick. That's what we have started with. You can see the exposure is quite off here with the clipped sky and the darker foreground to after where we have much more details. Now let's focus on a few areas locally, creating more depth for this scene using a bit of masking. Open up the masking panel right here. I'm going to start working on the foreground because that's an area which we can use to create depth by improving this shadow right here. So how can we do that? Let's start with a simple linear gradient here. Using this linear gradient, I'm trying to target all these shadows in the foreground without affecting the light on top of that hill like this. Now, I don't want to affect everything the same, especially those bright white flowers. Those shouldn't get darker, so I need a way to deselect them from this mask. I'm going to subtract a color range mask. And with the color range mask eyedropper, I'm just clicking right here in the white flower like this. And just like that, we have created a perfect mask for the purpose we want to use it. And now let's simply pull down the exposure, creating some very nice shadow this way. All right, that's looking great. I think I'm going to pull up this linear gradient a little further. And right away, let me use another linear gradient. I'm going to stack it on top, but I'm making it a little bit smaller this time. So the very near foreground will become even darker, giving us a more natural effect. Again, I'm subtracting a color range mask, getting rid of these white flowers from that selection. And then I'm going to bring down the whites instead of the exposure because I'm afraid of clipping the darkest parts of this area. So bringing down the whites will make it darker without introducing clipping in the darkest parts. Just like this. I think that looks great. I think I can even stack one more linear gradient on top. So let's do the same thing one more time. Choose a linear gradient. And again, I'm making it even smaller this time. And again, let's subtract with a color range mask to get rid of these flowers. So let's see. And let me try to pull down the exposure and carefully watch the histogram. I think I can safely go with minus 0.5 like this. We do have a little bit of clipping right here now, but I don't think it's too dramatic. So that's looking much better, creating some kind of 3D like effect on this shot. So let's continue. I also want to use a linear gradient on the sky, making the very top part just a little bit more interesting. I'm going to drop the exposure for that. All right, maybe let's even bring up the contrast, giving those clouds and some more structure. Okay, nice. Let me use another linear gradient for the top right corner of the sky. Here I'm going to bring down the blacks, making this corner just a little bit darker. Okay, that's looking good. 
then let me introduce a bit of glow using a radial gradient on the left side right here where the horizon meets the landscape okay for the glow effect all i do is to bring up the blacks and i am going to pull down the dehaze for a more intense glow beautiful then we can introduce a bit of warmth by bringing up the temperature like that then one more thing i want to do i want to specifically target these flowers in the foreground so let's use a color range mask i'm going to click right in here you see we get a pretty good selection but we're selecting a little bit too much so we need to modify this mask i'm going to subtract a linear gradient and i'm taking out pretty much everything at the top which lies in the light already now i'm going to bring up the whites which will make these flowers stand out a little more, making the foreground look more interesting. You might notice these flowers start to look a bit too yellowish. I want them to be kind of a purer white. So I'm going to bring down the temperature to achieve that. All right, and finally, we could bring up the clarity, giving these flowers some more punch. Perfect, and that's it for the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before to after much much better all right let's continue with a little bit of color grading i'm going to open up the color mixer for that here let's work on the saturation first and i want to boost the yellow tones specifically making the light areas of this image more intense wonderful at the same time the greens are a little overwhelming so i want to tone them down just a little bit to kind of balance these changes here with the increased yellow saturation I'm also going to bring down the blue tones just to not oversaturate the sky like this. We can also work on the luminance for a moment. So we can bring up the yellow luminance, which will make the highlights at the top of the hill just a bit brighter, giving us some more contrast. At the same time, we can bring down the blue luminance, making the sky just a bit darker and thus more dramatic. I can also bring down the green luminance, which will mainly affect the shadows in the foreground we have created earlier so that is looking really really good for this image i'm going to skip over the split tone because i don't think it's needed in this case but what i want to do is to open up the calibration tab here let's bring down the blue primary hue i just like this effect and i'm going to bring up the saturation all right done so now we can sharpen the image so let's open up the details panel bring down the radius increase the details then hold down the ok while applying the masking changes like this so we can nicely filter out the sky and i'm going to increase the amount of sharpening wonderful so we're done with the raw adjustments for the base image next up let's bring back that film strip from below we need to synchronize these settings we have applied on the base image with all the other images so with the base image selected i'm holding down the shift key Click on the last image in the film strip to select all four images then right click on one of them go to synchronize settings make sure to check all and hit ok now we have the same settings on all four images with these four images selected click on open objects now we want to stack all four images in the same photoshop file so i'm going to hit ctrl a to select everything hit ctrl c to copy the selection and let's go to our base image up here and here i'm hitting ctrl v which will bring this image on top of our base image and i'm repeating this step for all the other images so here's the second one ctrl a ctrl c go back to the base image and hit ctrl v now we have three layers up in here Let's do this one more time. Control A, Control C, go back to the base image and hit Control V. In the layers panel, you can see we have now all four images stacked on top of each other. Now for the focus stacking, let me deactivate all these layers. What you can see when I bring them back in one by one, these images are kind of misaligned because when you shift the focus on certain lenses, it will also slightly change the view angle. So we need to align these four layers. That's really, really simple. Simply select all four layers, go to the edit menu. Here we want to choose auto align layers and without changing anything, just hit OK. Photoshop will automatically align all four layers for us. 
Once this is done, I can deactivate them again and you will see they are nicely stacked on top of each other. Now for the focus stacking. Again, I'm selecting all four layers. Then we are going to the edit menu once more and here just below auto align layers, we will find auto blend layers, which you want to click now. Again, we don't need to change anything. Just hit OK. And just like that, we have done the focus stacking. But we really need to be careful. At first glance, this looks really, really good. But let's take a closer look. Sometimes Photoshop kind of messes up the focus stacking and we get some still out of focus elements right here in the foreground. Or well, let's go up a little bit. You can see the border of this image is also out of focus. And it's the same on the other side. So with this focus stacking method, you always need to watch out for these blurry parts still remaining in your image. What I'm going to do is I'm going to merge everything right here. So I'm selecting all layers and hit Control E. Actually, let's hit Control Shift Alt E, which will create a new layer out of all four layers below it. Then first I'm going to crop the image. This will get rid of the blurry borders. Let's take out a bit from each side. So like this. Next up, I want to clean up these autofocus flowers in the foreground. I'm going to use the spot healing brush for that. And I'm just going to brush over them, removing them this way and kind of creating a cleaner image. All right, and that's looking much, much better than before. Of course, if you want to have the best possible results and you want to keep all these elements in the image, you might want to check out different ways of focus taking. You could do this manually, for example, and there are also plugins for Lightroom and Photoshop to do that. However, I feel like this is a great method if you want to be fast and quick and just don't want to spend too much time on stuff like focus taking. So next up, we can clean up this image a bit. I do want to get rid of this flower right here because it's kind of cut off by the edge of the image. I'm also going to get rid of these at the bottom and these pink ones right here. So just making the whole thing look a bit cleaner. I'm also going to get rid of this thing at the top. I'm using this, the clone stem tool for that. I'm going to copy an area from right next to it, holding down the Alt key, then click here. Now I'm just going to brush over the areas which I want to remove and I'm repeating the step for the other areas. And let's do the same right here. Perfect. All right. And there we have the finished image. I hope this will make the focus stacking for your images a little bit more successful. If you have any questions or want to share any tips with us, feel free to write a comment. And thank you so much for watching this video.